My friends, welcome to this episode of the Outdoor Gear Review. What I have here is the Nemo Tensor Insulated Sleeping Pad. This is my second season of testing this out. This is going into the second winter where I've been testing this out. And I figured before it gets cold, really cold, I should share with you all my review of this product. For many years now, everyone, I've been using primarily the Thermarest X-Therm sleeping pad for my winter trips. Let me tell you folks, that is a fantastic sleeping pad. It's one of my favorites. And I will compare it directly to this pad in this episode. So last year, Susie and I, we went out on a wintertime trip together and she loves the Thermarest as well. So she took it, so I needed something else and that's why I got this product in. So I've been testing it out since then. I used it last winter, into the spring, summer, into the fall, now going back into winter. So with all of my experiences with this pad, I'm ready to share with you all my thoughts, my feelings about this product. So first things first, you have the sleeping pad itself inside of this storage bag. You have a draw pull at the top, and you do have like a placement here so you can easily pull the bag off. So you get the storage bag. It has a Velcro compression strap that goes around it. Before we look at the pad, let's take a look at this. What this is, is an inflation bag. And I am glad that Nemo includes this because this is an excellent product. With the sleeping pad here, this is a very large pad. It's very thick and it takes a lot of air to inflate this. Now folks, let's go ahead and inflate this pad here. So you have a valve that's up in the corner and this is a multi-purpose valve. You can open it up and you can release all of the air or once it's installed, you can open up the top and you have a stopper. So you can breathe into this, stop, and none of the air escapes. So I will go ahead, begin inflating this and let's count together how many breaths it takes. <laughs> I'm getting warm. This is going to take a while. All right, so we're at 20 and I'm dizzy. <laughs> Woo. So we're looking at 22, 23 breaths, depending on how firm you want this. So you can see there, the valve is open, just the top layer, and none of the air is escaping. The yellow side is the front, the gray side is the bottom. Before going any further in this episode, let's go over some stats concerning this pad. First off, there are numerous versions of this sleeping pad. There's a non-insulated, there's an insulated, and there's also the Alpine version, which has a slightly higher R value. Now, speaking of which, the R value of this is 3.5. The Alpine is 4.8. With an R value of 3.5, the majority of users will be comfortable down to roughly 20 degrees. Keep in mind that this is subjective. So personal experiences with this pad or any other insulated pad will vary. Below 20 degrees, you may want a sleeping pad that has a higher R value, or you may want to use an additional pad, such as a foam pad, a foam mat to go underneath this pad to basically cut the cold from coming through. Now everyone, let's talk about sizes and shapes. There's a short version of this pad. There's a regular size mummy. There's a regular size rectangle, which I have here. There's a regular length wide version of this one. And there's also a long and wide rectangle shape pad. The price of the regular length, regular width, rectangle pad is 160 And if you're considering the other versions, the prices will go up or down depending on what you're looking at. The short version will be less expensive, whereas the large and wide version will be more so. Now let's talk about materials. This pad is composed of a 20 denier polyester that features a PU coating. It has thermoplastic valves and it has an aluminized thermal mirror film. And this is the insulation. It features two layers of this. And this is similar to what Thermarest has done with their X-Therm sleeping pad. And as far as colors go, you will find this in yellow for the ultralight version. But if you're going for the Alpine version, which has a slightly higher R value, you will find that in orange. The measurements of the regular length, regular width rectangle pad. This is 72 two inches long, 20 inches wide. It offers three inches of cushion. The weight is 15 ounces. The measurements of this pad when it's stored, you're looking at nine inches by four inches. And I almost forgot everyone, a repair kit is included. Now everyone, let's go over the pros and cons that I have for this pad, starting with the pros first. Nemo is known for making excellent backpacking camping gear. And the trend continues with this pad. This is an excellent sleeping pad, but there are some pros and cons to consider here. The quality of this is excellent. This is a top notch product. The construction, everything about it really is top notch and it's very well thought out. Nemo has a lot of experience when it comes to sleeping pads, sleeping bags, and so on, and it shows with this product. As far as comfort goes, everyone, this is one of the most comfortable sleeping pads I've ever been on. I mean, without a doubt, this pad is impressive. It's long enough, it's wide enough. The cushion, three inches. 
you can lay on this any way that you want to and you don't have to worry about feeling the ground underneath you. As soon as you lay down on this, you begin feeling your heat radiating back to you. And that's thanks to the insulation, that aluminum film on the inside. The only time that you will feel the ground is like say if you sit up and you have only the butt pushing into the earth. You will feel it then, but with your body on the pad, you do not feel anything at all. For side sleepers, this offers excellent cushion here. You do not have to worry about sleeping here and feeling the ground underneath you. Let me put it this way, everyone. Sleeping on this pad is awesome. I mentioned before that this is similar to the X-Therm as far as the insulation goes with the aluminum film on the inside. The difference between this pad and that pad in regards to sound, to noise, is that this one is fairly quiet. You can lay on this, it doesn't sound like a bag of chips or anything like that. Whereas the Thermarest X-Therm, it, it's a loud pad. It really does sound like you're on a bag of potato chips. It's noisy. Next, this is an ultra light pad. It really is. For the size, the cushion, this is very, very impressive. Next up, the valves here are very, very good. You can easily open it up, let the air out, and you can also easily inflate this by mouth. Next up, the included inflation bag is very, very good. This is a much better design than what many companies offer, including Thermarest. You can easily attach it to the inflation valve and you can easily just inflate this in a matter of minutes and you don't have to get dizzy doing so. Nemo refers to this as the Vortex Pump Sack. I call it the inflation bag. The next pro that I have for the sleeping pad is price. 160 bucks for an insulated sleeping pad that's this comfortable. This is a fairly good deal. I've mentioned before how much I like the Thermarest X-Therm. That's a great pad but it is substantially more expensive than this. Now, the thing about the X-Therm is this. It features a substantially higher R value. So if you need an insulated sleeping pad for really cold conditions, that's definitely the way to go. Now, everyone, let's switch gears over to the cons. First off, we have to talk about the materials that are used for this pad. This pad has been very durable, but I've had to baby it. And when you go hands-on with this pad, you will see why. The materials, they feel delicate. They feel more fragile than, say, the X-Therm. The X-Therm feels substantially stronger than this pad. And I can tell you this, I've used the X-Therm for over five years. I've never had a single issue with that pad. Now, with that being said, if you take care of this, if you baby this, this pad will last you a very long time. Again, I'm going on to the second season with this pad and I've had no issues. But this is not something that I would lay directly on the ground. I think that would be a very bad idea. If you are going to put this inside of a tent, no problem. If you're going to use this underneath a tarp, you need to have some sort of ground sheet underneath this. Otherwise, you could potentially have problems. This is an ultralight pad. The materials are thin, so you have to be careful. You have to keep in mind what the purpose of this pad is. It's all about going ultralight while keeping you warm. And that's a trade-off. You have thinner materials for a lighter weight pad. The next con for this pad is that it takes quite a bit of air to inflate this. If you were going to do this by a mouth, it's going to take some time, right? Luckily, you do have the inflation bag. It does help quite a bit. The inflation bag, the Vortex, works very well. But when it comes to the opening here that gathers the air, it's small. So look at the overall cut of this. You have this wide body and a small opening. That doesn't make a whole lot of sense. Now, they did this so that you can easily roll it up but at the same time, they're limiting how much air can fill this bag. Overall, it works well, but it could be even better with the larger opening. Let me show you all what I'm talking about here. So with this bag, the opening is rather small. You need to stick your hand in and kind of open the bag up to fill it with air. Or you can hold it like so and blow into it. That will fill the bag with air, but there's a con to doing this. When you do this, you're blowing moisture into that bag, which you will ultimately blow into the pad itself. So in really cold conditions, that's something that you do not want to do. What happens is that moisture inside will freeze and the pad will not keep you as warm as it should. So in wintertime use, it's best to just open the bag up and then roll it even if it takes you longer to inflate the pad. And that takes us over to the final con that I have for this pad and that's the storage bag. In the perfect situation where you can roll up your pad super tight, it will fit inside of this. But as you know, the world's not perfect. When it's cold, you have gloves on, you're not rolling anything super, super tight. And oftentimes you will find that the sleeping pad doesn't fit adequately inside of the storage bag. Without a doubt, it could be bigger. Thermarest does it right as far as the storage bag goes. And folks, that wraps up my review of the Tensor sleeping pad. This is an excellent product. It's super lightweight. It is somewhat fragile. You do have to be careful here. Again, the purpose, the focus of this is ultralight and warmth. 
So keep that in mind. This pad is insanely comfortable. In fact, it's probably the most comfortable pad I've ever slept on. The materials themselves are very soft. There's no issues there like there are with some pads. Comparing this pad to the Thermarest X-Therm, this is substantially more comfortable as far as the materials go and also laying on it. Those are the pros and cons that I have for this product, everyone. Make sure to comment down below what you all think about this pad. If you have one, if you have any experiences, make sure to share with everyone else. All in all, everyone, this is an excellent product, super comfortable, ultra light. I can easily recommend it as long as you know exactly what you're getting here. I appreciate you all very much for watching this episode. Make sure to hit the thumbs up because it does help. Everyone, Take care, be well, strength and honor. Talk to you soon. Bye, everybody.